you say there? How are you? And she's got the phone out right from the beginning. We say, don't take the phone out. And she's got to take it out. She still has it out. This is young people. I need some content. I need content for my page. So all these fucking people I don't know still like me. I need to get some content. What is it? What is it about your page that makes you special? What are you saying to the world with your brand? You know what's fucking hilarious? By the way, this is, I'm just going to walk around doing this podcast. At some point, I will get tired because I am old, and I will sit down. And it'll be a sad moment that will remind all of you of your fucking mortality. <laughs> you ever do that? You ever go see a band from your fucking age? You know? And you're like, this is going to be great. I'm going to go see the fucking Scorpions. Right? The guy comes out and he looks like Richard Simmons now. And you're like, hey, I thought Richard Simmons stopped fucking helping out fat old people. I love that Richard Simmons retired or got held captive by some people who got control of his money. Whatever, whatever you want to believe happened to him. But all I know is he's done with sweaty fat people on cruises. You know, we're in West Hollywood right now. Can you think of a sadder third chapter to your gay life <laughs> than to be on a fucking cruise ship with a bunch of fat, straight old people trying to get them to sweat to the oldies? What fucking respectful gay man dances around to Bill Haley in the comments? It doesn't happen. How can you roofie a, f a curious teen <laughs> with a one, two, three o'clock? That's not what you do. It's got to be that, oops, 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 right? It eases you into this, <laughs> this sexual assault. Are you saying all gay men sexually assault people? No. But some of them do. <laughs> And that is true progressive thought. <laughs> Realizing that there's creeps with dicks in all gender, fucking whatever you're supposed to say. Whatever the fuck you're supposed to say. <laughs> you know what's funny right now is watching the hardcore left walking away from their hardcoreness, you know? After they fucking took out so many innocent people. Now they're doing their new thing is like, nobody got canceled. What are you talking about? Oh God, another old person saying, we can't even say this. It's like, no, you did do that. You did do that, you fucking cunts, right? <laughs> that, that is what happened, that is what happened, right? It all happened, we all rollerbladed. <laughs> we all told people they had to get vaccinated. And liberal left people flipped out if you didn't say they. And they tried to fucking end you. That's what they did. That is what they did. Now they're like, what are you talking about? Like your parents, right? When you go home for Christmas. And you're like, you know, every day you called me a dumb cunt. And it really affected my self-esteem. And they're always like, what? I never said that. You're crazy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, just have some casserole. <laughs> it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird when your parents die, right? And you don't even cry. You know? And you just feel more like it was like an old roommate that you lost touch with. And it's like an old roommate. Who has an old roommate that ever taught him how to ride a bike? They didn't. If you have bad parents, they didn't do that either. So when they die, it's just sort of weird. Like, oh yeah, whatever happened to that guy? <laughs> We're here at the Troubadour. How about a round of applause for this legendary venue? Elton John took a shit in that actual toilet up there. That's how he came up with that album title, whatever that was called. Brown Derby and the fucking choo-choo train going up your buttocks. What did he call it? I saw him when I was in Vegas. It was fucking amazing. The guy came out, had no opener, played like three hours of nothing but number one hits, right? But after, at the end of every song, what he does, because he's so fucking old now, and he can't do anything, he just, he just, you know, the piano, whatever that fucking doorway is, that trap door on top of the piano. I'm not an audiophile. I don't know what the fuck it's for. 
what he would do at the end of the song. He'd fucking, you know, and a Saturday night, but then he'd fucking end and he would just slam it down. And then he'd fucking stare. He'd mean mug the crowd. And everybody like, ah, yeah! Fucking Elton John, man! And I was like, why does he keep doing that? And then I saw him walking. And I was like, oh, that's why. That's why. No, actually what happened was I went into John Varvatos. Because that's what, you know, any dad, any old dad, that's where you shop of a certain age that sort of has a paunch, you know, but doesn't think they're that fat, right? You go and you buy a cool shirt. They had a picture in there of him in the 70s, and he was literally slamming down his hands on the piano, and his feet were all the way behind his head, and he was wearing, like, four-inch, like, wooden clogs <laughs> before slamming down on his fucking hips. And I was like, oh, that's what happened. <laughs> He did that for three decades on coke. And that's why he now walks like he used to be a fullback on the Steelers. <laughs> Dude, he just fucking walked across this. It's like, you know what? I believe that this is the farewell tour. I don't see this guy coming back. You know? And I'll say that's a, that's a compliment to him, all right? When you play piano and at the end of all of it, you walk like Earl Campbell. I knew that wasn't gonna land as hard as I wanted to, right? Who was Earl Campbell? He was two and a half Bo Jacksons, like <laughs> welded together. <laughs> anyway, so I wore my jean jacket here because this is what you do when you're a man of a certain age and you're going out to a rock venue. I'm gonna wear my jean jacket <laughs> so people know that I'm still rocking, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna stop short of putting my favorite band things on it because then it becomes sad. It becomes like a, really like a... Uh, a sad thing. Um, speaking of sad, this is like one of these, these fucking benches that's perfect for a homeless guy to lay down on. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you get mad when you show up like, God damn it, I wanted to sit down. And they're always sitting there. Like, you ever just have like a shit fucking week and you hate your life and you don't love the person that you're with anymore but too many holidays are coming up and you can't break up with them? <laughs> you know, or maybe they have like a birthday and you just got to go through the motions again as you're staring at that blank part of the card trying to write down emotions you don't feel anymore. And all you... <laughs> and all you want to do is lay down. Right? All you want to do is fucking lay down. And then you come up and they always... You just see that fucking homeless guy just laying there like the middle of the day on like a Tuesday. And you pull up in your Acura with the special sports package. All the trappings of a fucking cubicle, right? And you just look over and I'm going like, fuck, I'd love to do that right now. <laughs> you know, that's when your life sucks, when a homeless guy on a Tuesday afternoon can make it look good. Like, what if I just tapped out of society? You know? I'm sure I could find an off-ramp that there's not another homeless guy yet. That seems to be where you make your money, the off-ramps. The longest red light in LA. The off-ramp of the 101. As someone just sits there, he's looking at you, a dog's looking at you. Occasionally there's a baby, and you're like, all I got's a 20. It's like, I don't, I care like $5. I don't care $20. This could get me a gallon and a half of gas. Thank you, Joe Biden. I love how people still blame ties for gas prices and not the fact that we print a trillion dollars with nothing behind it every August. <laughs> this, is, this is liberals. This is fucking Donald Trump. Oh, is that what it is? I thought it was 10 cunts in the Federal Reserve with suits, right? Did somebody explain to me why the president just doesn't send the army over there with guns and walk in and be like, yeah, this is over. This is over. We don't owe you any money. You guys can all go fuck yourselves. And it's our currency again. And we say it's worth something. All right? You guys left me on that. What are you all economists? Well, that's actually not how it works. What you gotta have is you need a valuable metal. But what gives gold value? Excellent question. Let's go to the fucking blackboard. That's when you know you're in deep shit. When you gotta take that required economic class and the fucking guy's all excited about it. <laughs> he literally sounds like he's speaking a different language. He's just like, there's no way I'm gonna pass this class, right? 
I have a better chance of banging the hottest chick in this class than I do of getting any sort of respectable fucking grade. Um, sorry, I'm, oh, I am in a mood. My shoulder's fucked up again. Went right back to square, you know, it happens. You know, I was fucking rubbing one out. I got into it. My, I used the lotion, my hand flew off my dick. And it just felt like lightning, you know what I mean? My balls are blue, my fucking shoulder hurts. This is what it is. They don't make an icy hot for that, do they? <laughs> icy hot, is that the dumbest fucking thing ever? There's so much shit out there, all it does is just numb it, and then you'd go wears away. Those guys are drug dealers. I need another icy heart. I can, I can feel the pain in my back again. Have you ever thought about maybe getting a massage, you dumb fuck? You guys don't like massages, huh? Is it too gay for you? I hate when somebody asks me, you know, like my masseuse unfortunately passed away, the great Diana Linden. Um, and uh, so I've been looking for a new one, right? So I'm calling up my agent because they represent all these fancy fucking people. So I'm like, all right, fancy people like massages. Who do you got? And the guy sends me the email back. He goes, well, we got some people. Do you prefer a man or a woman, right? And it's like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck do you think? Of course a woman. No, get me some hairy bald guy with fucking hair coming out of his ears. Of course I want a woman, right? Exactly. You want a woman to touch you, and then, you know, you can think in your head, maybe she likes me, you know? Maybe there's, there's something else at the end of it. It never happens, right? But it's the hope. I like to have hope during a, during a massage, not horror, right? <laughs> not the Travolta ending, you know? I want the... Uh, not to say there's anything wrong. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was coming down here the other day, and uh, there was, you know, some you know gay bar down there, total sausage fest, right? And they had them like fucking boxed in. There was nobody on the sidewalk, and there was like 80 gay guys all just standing like this inside this fucking thing. <laughs> it's like evidently that's the place to be. <laughs> Yeah, I was riding with my wife. I go, look, old cock and pfeffers is fucking jammed tonight. <laughs> if I ran a gay bar, that's what it would be called. Cock and pfeffers. <laughs> I'm a Bugs Bunny fan. I don't know what. Um, hello around the world. Huh? No, no, the camera's not you, you self-involved Hollywood people with your hot tubs up there banging babies and drinking the blood so you can stay younger. That's what the rest of the world thinks. Yeah, they're all like, that's what they're doing. Uh, 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 you know what else I heard? <laughs> What's going on mainland China? Risking your freedom to watch this ignorance. How are you? No, I get people from mainland China. How's it going? With dreams of hopping the fence and going to Hong Kong, right? Do they have the Beijing wall or something like that over there? I don't know. I grew up in American public schools. They didn't teach me that stuff. <laughs> they only taught me about the powdered wigs people. And that's why I think black people are prone to violence and never assimilated. <laughs> I love when white people say that. Oh, they're prone to fucking violence. Have you ever fucking on your own? Just read about 1865 to about 1892, the accomplishments of black people, and then it'll kind of flip the whole fucking thing around. Ooh, it got serious. <laughs> it got serious in here. Um, all right, how do I get out of that? All right, let's talk about... <laughs> I hate when people interview you and they go, you know, you get, a light, you get away with a lot. You get away. No, I don't. I don't get away with anything, because you're, 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 you're presuming that what I'm saying is meant in a malicious way. It's not true. Jesus, how fucking old do they think I am that I have? Like, I, I have my jean jacket on and a t-shirt. I just, oh my God. Preachers always have these, you know? That's because they know coming through that door is the IRS in any minute. They're just like, and Jesus, 
Jesus wants you to have that F-250 that you don't even need. He wants you to have it. He wants you to pay me all in cash so I, I don't have to claim most of it. Um, anyways, I don't know why. I've been thinking about this lately. Is there anything funnier than watching somebody kick a little dog and watch it just go flying across the fucking room? I don't mean like an innocent little dog that was just laying there sunning itself like a homeless man on a bench. I don't mean that. I mean like an asshole that doesn't realize how little it is. I had a dog like that. We used to always have West Highland Terriers when I was a kid. We had one that fucking bit everybody, even us. You know, because we used to tease the shit out of it. <laughs> we used to just fuck. We used to play the glove game and fucking, uh, yeah, face wash it. I know. Hey, it was the 80s. This is what you did. You got a pet to take out your frustration from the lack of love you were receiving <laughs> from everyone around you. That's what happened. Maybe if we were loved more, we would have pet the dog. <laughs> Rather than coming at him with a wiffle ball bat, giving him a fucking <laughs> jab like he was on some sign of terrier death march. Right? So this thing, you know, this thing, I, whenever a stranger came into the house, without question, it just went up and bit him. Because it was like, well, if these people who are supposed to be loving me and are taking care of me are acting like it's the NHL playoffs and giving me a face wash every day, what the fuck is this complete stranger going to do? So the fucking dog would just, you know, I had to like, you know, he had to like lock it up, this little terrier. And one time my buddy showed up. We were going to uh, some Bruins game or something. He came in. I remember he had the fucking short Larry Bird shorts with the fucking <laughs> socks up to here and like white Reeboks. And he just came walking in and my dog just rah, rah, came walking. And my buddy, laziest dude ever too. Big beer belly like he was in his 50s. Never even broke stride. He's like, hey, Birdman, what's up? And he just poof, just punt the thing. And the dog literally like frisbee across the kitchen and landed and had to like regroup, you know, and it was still barking like, ah, 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 but it wasn't charging anymore. It was great. It was like seeing the day the hot chick realizes she's not hot anymore, and now she has to fucking do the work of developing a personality. Like, oh, how do you do that, right? And most of them don't. They don't develop a personality. They get Botox, and they go right to a steakhouse, they try to find some old guy in his 80s with a pocket square and a blue blazer. And they're like, I'll fuck that for the last eight months of his life. I'll work my way into the will, right? I don't want to work. If I wanted to work, I'd have all original parts, right? Rather than these aftermarket titties, you know? And this Brazilian butt lift. At some point, I am going to fucking talk about... Uh, what am I? I'm gonna talk about Universal. Let me talk about Universal, okay? For those of you around the world, out here in LA, we have, there's two theme parks, okay? You have Disneyland, right? Which is the one you wanna go to. <laughs> All right? They know, I'm gonna sit down for this so you guys know that this is coming from the heart, okay? <laughs> Plus, also, I have to wipe my brow because I just took. <laughs> Jesus wants you to go to Disneyland. Uh, the devil, the devil is in Universal. My manager's here right now. Don't trash Universal. Don't try, still, still, trying to, still trying to sell the movie. Well, Till's still trying to sell that movie. Um, this is actually a terrible couch. It's very slick and it's shallow. This is... <laughs> it's actually depressing, you know? Like you're slowly getting older, going into the fucking ground. Um, or maybe it's my posture. So anyway, Universal, it's, it's like they make, they're making shit on the lot, and then up top, the people that go to their movies, they have all of these fucking rides that you go on. So every once in a while, a new ride opens up, and if you have kids, your kids want to go on it. So the new Mario World ride opened up, and we went there, and my wife, my wife, um, <laughs> I don't know what she did. Like, she always buys the VIP shit. She goes, don't worry. She goes, we had the VIP, you know, we could just fucking go in. And, but our VIP shit didn't count on the new ride. They're like, yeah, that doesn't count. We're like, what are we talking about? We paid an extra 100 bucks per ticket. They're like, yeah, that's for the other rides. You know? <laughs> Do you remember Joe Dirt? You remember that? The Joe Dirt ride. You can get on that. Shout out to David Spade. The Joe Dirt ride. It's a fucking 69 Super B that does a loop-de-loop. -loop. You can say, I don't want to fucking go on that. Well, you wouldn't have to stand in line. There's no one in that line, you asshole. It's a fucking movie from 30 goddamn years ago. 
We have the Tango and Cash fucking water ride. It's, it's good for that, but any of this new shit. So we go into like Mario World, and the first thing we did, we got there early, and we stand in line for this fucking ride. Dude, it was two hours and 40 minutes to get on the fucking ride. Dude, every time you thought you'd gone up the last flight of stairs and gone into the last room, they had, and there was no refreshments, no nothing. So people are getting dehydrated, and then they keep bringing you outside of the structure. And I'm going, I'm, you know, uh, this is one of those fights you don't want to have with your wife in that line, because there's no, you can't walk away, right? You're just st standing there. You don't want to start anything. And I'm just sitting there thinking like, what the fuck, didn't you get the fucking goddamn shit? You know? You always know where the best shit is. How did you fuck this up, right? I was like the dad in Poltergeist, you know? You moved the gravestones, but you didn't move the bodies. Why? That's what I wanted to do. You got VIP tickets, but it didn't count on this shit, right? So two hours and 40 fucking minutes standing in line. It was so bad in the beginning, I actually, I felt for everyone around me going like, how can you do this to these hardworking Americans? This is fucking terrible to run a business like this. People come here, they're with their kids. People are crying. <laughs> Dude, is this like a recycled couch? Was this made out of like plastic bottles or something? By some hipsters in Silver Lake? Um, <laughs> it's made out of tents from tent cities. And then we got them. We got them new shit. Yeah, so stand in line going like, how the fuck can you fucking do this to people? This is what, within an hour of that. I, was, I just hated everybody. And I was like, you know what? These fucking people deserve it. Look at it. Bunch of fat fucks standing here. Fucking cunts in front of me. They cut us. They did this thing where they, were like, they sort of like saw how long the line was. And they'll say it was like going all the way that way. They sort of got to like, you know, the, it was like, you know, only like five or 10 groups of people. And they kind of went like, well, is that, is that the line? Is that, is that like... Is that like the lawn? And then they were just fucking in it. And like, that was like an hour of my life. Going, why didn't I say anything? You know, I didn't say anything because they all outweighed me by at least 120 pounds. Yeah, morbidly. Morbidly obese in their 20s. Prime of their life, you know? Should be running down the beach like they're in Baywatch carrying that little thing, whatever that thing was for. Like, what was that thing? For? <laughs> that little football? I'm in the ocean. That's what I'm going to hang on to. You're going to put it in your teeth and fucking swim back with your big fucking heavy fake 90s titties like we're not going to go down to the ground? You might as well put cement shoes here, right? So we finally get into like this room. They're like, okay, everybody, we're getting ready to fucking do it. And they bring us like a whole group of us. They're like, come on, everybody. I see space. I see, see space. Keep walking in. All right, and we're like in that trash compactor thing from that movie you guys like, right? The fucking Star Wars, right? Yeah, fucking, yeah, buddy. <laughs> fucking Star Wars, man. Fucking live long with Chewbacca and your Buck Roger beady beady shit, right? So <laughs> there will be one person that comes up. Oh, that's Star Trek. They do that in Star Trek, all right? Star Trek is May the Force Be With You, right? Is that how they do it? No, wait, that's Hitler. It's hard. I, it's hard to keep them all, keep track of all of them. <laughs> um, you know, that's an expression in my house when, like, you're not dealing with the issue, when you're not actually dealing with the issue at hand and you're trying to argue something else. There's an expression in my house. So you're, you know what you're doing right now? You're defending Hitler's mustache. <laughs> What, Charlie Chaplin had it? W.C. Fields? Just ignoring these six million Jews that were killed. But let's make this about the mustache. It was in style. Uh, <laughs> Reginald Van Gleeson had a longer version of it. Um, so anyway, we get into the, the fucking trash compactor room, and then we're standing, and the door closes behind us, and there's no fucking ride. So now it's like claustrophobic. We're in there with all of these people, right? I can't believe, like, cargo pants are coming back again, right? <laughs> is that really going to be a thing? It is. Okay. I survived them in the 90s. You're never going to use all those pockets. I'm just letting you know there's never going to be a reason. 
even with your vape pens and your fucking weed, there's going to be no reason to have all of those pockets, all right? You're not going on safari, right? <laughs> Commandeering some indigenous people to lead you through the jungle, right? <laughs> now that you need their help, you see them as human beings. <laughs> Afterwards, you'll leave and you're content to have them make your sneakers for the rest of your lives. <laughs> oh, the gronies showed up today. I care. <laughs> and you know what it is about me? I just feel feelings. I just, <laughs> I feel them. You know, when someone else is in pain, I feel their pain, but I continue to buy those sneakers. <laughs> but I do feel bad. I feel bad about what is going on. <clears throat> so we get in this fucking room, and then this poor woman, right? She's got like the, uh, the drive through the drive through microphone. She's like, all right, everybody's in. Okay. And we've been waiting for two hours and 40 minutes and she has the fucking balls to go, all right, you guys ready to ride the Super Mario ride? And the parents are like, yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. That was the entire purpose of this exercise. And you know the deal. When somebody says, are you ready? No matter how much you say you're ready, it's never enough, right? So we're standing there, she's like, oh, come on! This is the Super Mario ride! You could do better! Are you ready to ride the Super Mario ride? And everybody's like, with the last bit of fucking hydration we have in our body, we're like, yeah! Yes, we are! Tell me where the dick is and I will suck it! Please! Let this part of my life end, right? And then guess what happens? Nothing, nothing, because the ride has not arrived on the other side. So now she has to filler bust and she's not good at it. Going like, this ride took over 75 fucking hours to whatever the fuck she was saying. And then it ends and she starts again. All right, I hear it. I hear it! And she's like, are you guys ready? I remember there was this giant guy with this head that weighed as much as my body. And I could see him standing over everybody. And he was, I just saw the side of his face in the complete lack of synapses firing. And he's like squinting. And she was going like, are you fucking ready? Are you ready to get on the fucking Mario ride? And he was just like, he just opened his mouth and exhaled. was like, oh! <laughs> Right? And then she did it and she had the balls, the fucking cojones to do it again. She goes, come on! I said, are you fucking ready? And finally, this one dad who the only person with self-esteem less just went like, yeah, we've been waiting for two and a half fucking hours. Right? He didn't say fuck. And she had the balls to be like, what? And he goes, we've been waiting for two and a half hours. And I hated myself that I didn't say, yeah. Exactly. What do you think we're doing here? This is a horrible experience. Not worth the wait. We realized that an hour and 10 minutes in, but there was no way to get out. We were just surrounded and there was metal on both sides. It was like the Ron Burgundy. I'm trapped in a glass house of emotion. So finally we get in there. We go into another fucking room. They close the door and this fucking guy's talking. I can't, this, at this point, I don't even remember what happened. Then we went to the final last thing. It's like, okay, this is what you got. You got to put the thing on and then put the glasses on and then you got to fucking, this is shooting and all of this stuff. And then we got on and it was like fucking three and a half minutes. <laughs> and the whole, that's it. And the whole fucking thing was over and we in there. I couldn't tell what I was shooting at and all this type, but I don't play, I'm not a video game guy, right? You know what I mean? I drank beers, right? <laughs> I fucking hung out with the fellas. I could throw a ball, all right? I lived my childhood outside in reality. I didn't stay inside friendless, jerking off, pretending I was a Navy SEAL playing 
siphon filter. Well, actually, I played that game. <laughs> um, I was a video game guy for a minute. I was. I had one, and then like I just, I, I just, it took over my life. It took. But fortunately, I'm not good at like with electronics. So one day, I came home after spending the entire like last like week playing Grand Theft Auto or some shit. I just went. I had a PlayStation Two. I just went behind it and I just fucking unplugged everything and I wound all the wires together and I just threw it in the back of the closet. I don't think I, don't think I played a video game in my home ever since. I'm getting off track here. So the fucking, <laughs> the ride ends and we all get out. And you're just sitting there going like, Jesus Christ. Did my kid think it was worth Oh, I forgot that. We went with another dad and his kid. And his kid, an hour and 50 minutes in, was just hanging over <laughs> the fucking banister thing. And he's going, this is the most boring thing ever. <laughs> it was like bombing in stand-up for two hours and 40 straight fucking minutes. I remember one point I was sitting up on the thing because I finally had to sit down and I was up on the top thing, and I was sitting there, and I saw somebody walking down dressed as Super Mario, and I'm like, I know this bitch is gonna tell me to get off this fucking thing, and I am not moving. And she just came by and said, excuse me, excuse me, sir, could you not sit on the chair? Could you not bring relief to your lower back after this ungodly wait for three and a half minutes of a semi-good time? This is why I love my wife. She was sitting on the lower one, and I was sitting there, and the dad we were with was looking at us, waiting to acknowledge the authority, and neither one of us did. And she just kept walking. Could you not sit on that? Could you just, could you just stop? Just sit down. <laughs> and she never did anything, and we never fucking moved. I just looked at the guys like, I'm not fucking moving. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Throw me out and end this? <laughs> so, but here's the best part though. We ended up getting out of there, right? Um, by the way, I, I, I wanted to get a coffee, so I wanted a cappuccino, and they have like fucking 19 Starbucks in there, and I don't drink that fucking shit. <laughs> it's absolute shit. They don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> you know where those beans come from? Mainland China. <laughs> I know what you guys are up to. You're trying to take us out. You know that we love coffee, huh? We over there fucking with your dumplings? I don't think we are. No, I don't know where they get them. But their coffee fucking sucks. So they go, oh, well, you know, you go, I go, you get anything other than a Starbucks? And they're like, we have a French bistro. I actually believed that there was a French bistro at the fucking universal fucking backdraft ride amusement and fun center, right? So I was like, oh my God, right? And I go there and it's like, Le cafe. Le fuck. And I was like, oh my God. That's I am like so sunburned. And like, I'm actually believing, like it's like an oasis. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Higher culture, let me get some cappuccino. And I was like, yeah, can I get a cappuccino, please? Uh, je voudrais un creme café, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> and she goes, uh, she goes, yeah. And she grabs this giant fucking cup. It's like this big. And I'm like, oh no. This is gonna, what is that? What is that, a big gulp cappuccino? <laughs> it's supposed to be this big and you do the pretty little tree thing, right? And then I sit down and act like I'm working on a script. That's a cappuccino. You don't pull out the fucking Marvel movie fucking Mountain Dew cup. And I see the lady making it. She's just not even looking. <laughs> Steaming up the milk. <laughs> I took two sips of it. I was like, they were nice. They were nice enough. But like the, the fucking, I just remember I talked to them and they thought I was a good person. And now I'm shitting on them. It just, it was terrible. And I fucking threw it out. And I just like, I'm trying to work on not cursing in front of my kids. And we sat down at, to eat a crusty burger <laughs> at the Simpsons part of the park. <laughs> And I finally, like, my wife's going like, so do you want to go down and go on the, uh, the Jurassic, Jurassic fucking Velociraptor fucking ride? And I just, I couldn't hold it anymore. I go, I'm fucking wiped. I, I, just, I can't, I just don't want to do this anymore. Like, you know, if this is like the end of the relationship, I'm actually, 
I don't know if I have it in me to like save it. And if you just want to meet some other guy here with mouse ears that has a little better attitude about this types of things, like I'm sure we can work on a financial settlement, but I am fucking, I am fucking out of here. Like I can't, I literally can't fucking do this anymore. Oh, it's great when you leave. When you leave, they're like, fuck you. Like, you got to go all the way out this way. And where all the fatties come in, they got this wide berth. And you just got to walk all the way. You're seeing the shrubbery. It's so bad because you can see, like, civilization. Like, oh, my God, look at those houses that have air conditioning. And stuff. <laughs> you're fucking just walking out. But the best part was we got home. And, like, my, my daughter fell asleep and everything, and she came in, and her nana was there. And she was like, how was it? And she was just like, it was unbelievable. And she totally flipped out and everything. I was like, all right, thank God. <laughs> so it was worth it. So in a way, that was an endorsement. <laughs> in a way, in a way, that was, that was an endorsement. I got to make sure I don't go over. You want to go to the chat? You know? Uh, no, 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 I'm not going to the chat. I got other shit I want to fucking talk about, you know? <laughs> but we got to make sure we get it all in before people in Thailand get their feet beaten. <laughs> <laughs> you have the nerve to enjoy your day? <laughs> you are only allowed... You know, it's funny, there's probably someone in Thailand right now laughing their ass off, but I want to say thank you for fucking watching. Um, I went to a benefit last night with two, two of our friends, amazingly talented musicians performed at, right? And it was, it was the American Heart Association, and they were raising awareness. And you know what it was called? It was called the Heart and Stroke Ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they called it, and somehow nobody saw it and they're up there performing and there's a fucking sign right to the right that says heart and stroke ball. And I'm like two years old, so I'm sitting there, ha, ha, stroke ball, ha, 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 ha. And I took a gummy. So, and there's this woman up there, she's talking about this, this horrible f journey of like her kid was born with half a heart, happy ending, like the kid, like, survived because the American Art Association, so it was an American thing, but it just kept going. Every time you thought she had the last operation, there was another operation, and it just kept getting sadder and sadder. Like, like what was that fucking movie with the big chick there? You know? Precious. Precious. <laughs> right? It just kept, you know, when it just gets so fucking sad, you just are staring at the table, like, oh my God, this is so fucking sad. I can't believe I bitch about standing in line for the Mario ride. I'm such a piece of shit. And the gummy was kicking in. And as sad as it was and as much empathy that I had, I kept looking up and it said heart and stroke ball. And then I would start laughing. And I was just like, and my wife looked at me and she's going, don't. Don't, you fucking dare. And you know that day when somebody tells you not to laugh, then it just becomes like, <laughs> like, it was one of the saddest stories I've ever heard in my life. And, she, and it was like, it was, she was like 18 minutes into this sad story. And then she goes, and that wasn't even the bad part. And I, I almost spit take. Well, I was just like. <laughs> I was waiting. And then a tree landed on her house. Yeah. That's why I don't believe in God. <laughs> that he would do that to somebody. They just wanted to have a kid. Why would you do that to somebody? They're like, God loves you. It's like, does he? <laughs> what, because he didn't do that to me? But why did he do that to that person? They're probably a better person than I am. <laughs> well, you know, God works in mysterious... <laughs> don't give me that fucking bullshit! No, you don't have an answer. Well, you know what it is. God, God sometimes <laughs> has somebody born with half a heart so their kid can go, their parents can go... They're supposed to experience joy of having a kid, and then they have that fucking thing happen to them, and then they're trying to tell the story, right? And you want to be empathetic for them, and then some fucking asshole writes heart and stroke ball and fucking leaves it right next to him. And God also made that person. He made all those people that sat in that room and looked at that fucking side and went like, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Let's have that up there. Trolling her the entire fucking time. It was unbelievable. One of the, like, the fact that the, 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 the strength 
that it took that woman and that kid to go through all of that shit, and that they didn't deserve that sign. <laughs> that wasn't God, that was the devil. The devil made the person type all of that shit. Uh, what did I want to talk about up here? Uh, Mario thing, Mario ride. Oh, we're going to the Mario movie after this. That's what we're gonna go fucking do. We were supposed to go yesterday. We were supposed to go yesterday, but, and we went in. It was funny, we, we, we went to like the IMAX theater, right? And they had like the fucking, you know, the, the reclining seats and everything. Our daughter's in the middle, she's all amped up. You know, we're both excited. Uh, you know, my wife's smiling, the greatest thing ever. You know, she's in a great mood. And uh, we're just staring at this, 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 the screen is just all green. And it has these five circles on it. We're looking at it, and the movie's supposed to start at 11.30. Nothing happens. 11.35, nothing happens. And my wife, the lovely Nia, leans in. She goes, I think there's something wrong with the screen. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's on. You know? <laughs> they just haven't cranked it up yet. She goes, no, I think there's something wrong. I'm like, ah, we're all right, you know? 11.40, still the green screen. And then she starts going like, my, what's funny, what gets my wife going? You know, for me, it's like fucking everything, right? <laughs> like, I flip out over the dumbest shit, you know, like, uh, and I can't even think. I can't, because it, it's so dumb. Like, I don't even, like, I don't even remember it, you know? I just, you know what I do is I say really a lot. <laughs> you know, like, for some reason, whenever I get in my car, I have nothing in my hands. And by the time I get home, there's like 50 things I gotta take out, I drop the garage opener, and then I just, I'll scream at the top of my lungs in my car, really? <laughs> my wife never flips out, right? And she started flipping out, going like, you need to go out there, and you need to say something, and ask, it's like, what the f to who? Like, I don't, the owner of this place? I, he's in some dark room, like the guy in The Natural who owns the baseball team, right? 40-year reference, nobody got it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck, what, who am I supposed to talk to? The ticket terror? Like, does he also run the projector and he's gonna change the reel to reel? So finally some woman comes walking in. She's like, okay, uh, I got good news and I got bad news. She goes, good news is you're all gonna get a refund. And everybody's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> The bad news is when the projector doesn't work, but you can kind of like a so. So now my daughter's upset. Yeah, you know what I mean? They want to see the movie, so we got we to gotta go back. Because we were maybe going to go see the 12 o'clock one, and then it became stressful. And I was like, no, fuck that. We'll come back tomorrow and, and, and sit in, like, in the right theater, and it'll be all be good. And unfortunately, my daughter wanted to get out of there, so she does have, she is half me at the end of the day, you know? <laughs> she does have that, well, let's get the fuck out of here. Um, am I going, am I going to go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little more, a little more chatting here before. This isn't bad, right? This isn't bad. I mean, you, know, you know, I rode that motorcycle last week and I can't get it out of my fucking head. Stupid. I put, that's like I took a drink. I put that to bed. Motorcycle, L.A., dumb. Motorcycle, L.A., dead. <laughs> I rode for six weeks, 10 years ago, before weed was legal, and I was like, fuck this shit, right? Forget about now. But there was, I don't know, it brought it all back. <laughs> to the point, I, I actually was going to drive down to Largo. I was thinking it was at Largo, this show, because, not because I didn't know it was at the Troubadour, is because that part of my dad brain was like, uh, motorcycle, Ducati store on La Cienega. And I was gonna drive down, ooh, how much is this thing? Like my wife was gonna give me the green light. <laughs> like, yeah, why don't you go do that? It's not hard enough that we have two kids six and under. You know, it'd be great if your body got cut in half and you somehow lived. And then I had to bring you soup the whole fucking day as you laid there going, oh, I'm sorry, I fucking... <laughs> I rode the 405. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's do some of the, uh, the questions from around the world, the world, the world, the world. How does this work, Andrew? Uh, well, people are on the chat. Uh, oh, people are on the chat, everybody. So they uh, have the, the, Are they sending in JPEGs? For you to put onto the floppy disk to the upload it and 
the first, leak everybody in so we can circle back? The first full statement was he's wearing white sneakers to make himself look less translucent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, bloodless Bill, it's always funny. <laughs> It's always funny. Well, look at that. Look at you guys then, all uh, turning on me. The first joke. Some hellos from Norway, Georgia, Florida. Norway. Those people are fucking animals. <laughs> Dude, I did a show out there. I don't think I've ever seen people drink like they. They're fucking Vikings. They're maniacs. They fucking, they all fucking. There was a guy, like when I was backstage, I did a, sh a show in Oslo. Right, which is a really, really ritzy town. I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but like back in the day, Sweden conquered the lower third of Norway, right? And they just took the shit over. And they're like, fuck you, you know, we're more Viking than you are, right? We're fucking your women, we're eating your food, and all you guys are going up north, something like that. I didn't read the story, but that's basically how <laughs> all conquering of land happens. And then you write a story like, God wanted us. That's the history. God wanted us to have this part of it. So long story short, in, the, um, in World War II, Sweden remained neutral. Right? They didn't pick a fucking side. So that's how they became an economic power after World War II, because they were actually just the fact that they were still standing. So what they did was they basically looked the other way, because Norway was on the side of the Allies. So they looked the other way as the Nazis used their trains, you know, <laughs> you know, minding our own business. Fucking angry Hitler showing up. And this one goes to the fucking Norway. <laughs> Hello, sir. You want to take the downtown six over there? And you can continue massacring people. We don't really have an opinion on it. <laughs> and they just let him go in there and fuck everybody up. So at the end of the war, yes, yeah, Sweden became a power because they, they, just the fact that they were still standing and every other fucking city was leveled. Um, that's why today it's a really cool city to, to, uh, to visit because all the cool old buildings are still there. So, long story short, the fucking war ends and Norway is in such a bad way. Oh, I forgot to say in the beginning, uh, they somehow got the bottom third of their country back, Norway did, before World War II. So then after Hitler went in there and did all the bullshit he did, the Germans, at the end of the war, Norway was so fucked up, they offered to sell the lower third of their country back to Sweden. And Sweden was just like, yeah, nah. <laughs> We like the fact that you can't keep your head above water and that lower third that we wanted and you wanted back so bad is now fucking gonna drag you under like an anchor, right? That's what they did. Here's the funny thing. The Norwegians discovered oil there. <laughs> a whole bunch of it and they made a zillion dollars and now Swedes take trains into their country and do the jobs that Norwegians don't wanna do. <laughs> yeah. Some guy in Sweden told me that. He goes, yes, we are the Mexicans. <laughs> that, that is what happens. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> we remained neutral. Hitler was so complimentary of our blonde hair and our blue eyes. And we were like, oh, no, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Would you like to take a choo-choo train into <laughs> Norway? <laughs> Kill some of those brown-haired people? Um, you know what's funny about that part of the world? Everybody's like 6'5". So you're running, I was running into kids that were like 5'11", and their voice hadn't even changed yet. <laughs> they were like, like 12 years old going, Come on, Mom, I want to have it! But, you know, speaking in whatever fucking... <laughs> they were like taller than me. I felt like a little Lilliputian. Um, so anyway, so you're saying, yeah, so I went over and I did a show there, and there was a fucking guy backstage that had just gotten back from one of those, one of those Asian countries that fucking, they do, the, they do the, uh, the Muay Thai. Thailand. There you go. Figured it out. <laughs> huh? Muay Thailand. I got it. He came back. The dude was fucking shredded and had one of the most savage beards I'd ever seen in my life. Like, he just, he wasn't a beard. He just didn't shave. So it started under his eyes and just disappeared under his collar. I'm going, dude, what's going on with you, man? You look like a badass. And he's just like, it's like, well, you know, it's every year I go over to Thailand, you know, I got this shit beat out of me for six weeks. They are the best fighters in the world. Why wouldn't I go over to compete with them? <laughs> this fucking hairy face. None of them sound like that, by the way. All right, so what, what am I doing uh, here? Just a few more shout outs. Puerto Rico. France. Puerto 
Puerto Rico. There you go. Some of the most beautiful women in the fucking world. Come on, everybody. Nothing? No love for Puerto Rico on the West Coast? Jesus uh, Christ. Somebody said... Uh, Didn't they have like a hurricane or something over there? Something happened, right? <laughs> Didn't Hollywood pretend to care for like six weeks? Yep. We did. All right. <laughs> That's how I know about those islands. That's the only time they talk about them. Something bad happens. There was an earthquake in Haiti, right? Yeah. There was that ex-baseball player that took over the country in Cuba. <laughs> no? All right. Why am I looking at you like you're going to hand me the questions? Am I reading them? Well, I, they're just the chat's going by quick, so I'm just going to hit you a few. We have emails that you'll read over there, but I just oh. wanna, I want well, to... Oh, well, let me get... I'll get into the emails then. Yeah, I just want to uh, read a few more for the people online. Uh, they're playing a little bit of a bingo. You kind of already mentioned the Fed, Botox, and fatties in a pretty... <laughs> All right. Quick, all right? So, so that's good. Everybody's checking Hey, what is Skinner not going to play Freebird? <laughs> Jesus. How, how, about a, how about a deep cut? You know what I mean? Uh, that comment really bugged me. That's like, that's, you know what? That's, that's like when you're on a couple's date and your wife gives you a little fucking dig. That's what that was. Yeah, that's three things he talks about. Oh, are you bored? Are you bored with the lifestyle, you fucking asshole? Uh, um, do you guys want bread? Do you want bread? I'm not having bread. You can have it if you want the bread. <laughs> These are the conversations you have on couples dates. You guys thinking dessert? Are we thinking dessert? What are we thinking? Are we thinking dessert? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what annoys me? It's when I see two women, like, sitting eating with two spoons splitting a dessert. <laughs> There's just something about that just fucking bugs me. You know what I mean? All the bitching that they do about how they're not free and they're oppressed by society. It's like, you out of your fucking mind. Do you know what would happen to me if me and Andrew sat outside <laughs> and split a dessert with two fucking spoons and we're just sort of playing? I don't have hair, but whatever, you know? Just sort of. Do you have any idea what would have happened to me Andrew, I've always wanted to, you know, have, split a root beer float with you with two straws. <laughs> I'll check with your assistant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me do, we'll do the ad read here. It's just the one, just right? Just the one, just say hello. Oh, everybody around the world, look here. We have the solution for plastic bottles in the ocean. Liquid death. Liquid death. It's water, by the way. It's awesome. Cops think you're drinking and driving, then you go, ah, you wasted your time. <laughs> right? Can't beat me up for no reason, I'm white. <laughs> Those are the rules. All right, liquid death. I love liquid death, I do. Somebody's doing something about this shit. I mean, they could have come up with a better name. You know, it happens. That's like my wife watches The Real Housewives. They, they, the charity they have over there, it says uh, homeless, not toothless, is the name of the charity. We're not going to help you fucking get inside, but we will fix your teeth. I'm sick of looking at your broken smile when you live on a... <laughs> when you're sitting under a, a, a fucking overpass during a rainstorm like a coyote. Oh, I feel so bad. Do you stop? Have you ever stopped and tried to help? No, you haven't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like, you get it. Driving by it looks like something that you could do. I could change the world, right? You start to have that Michael Jackson music in your head. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm helping that toothless fuck. My four-door sedan has paddle shifters. <laughs> You want to make a world a bet to space? And then you get out of the car, you're like, God damn, these people are fucking... <laughs> Wild animals don't smell this bad. I can't help this shit. I would need a fire hose. Do they have any leftover fire hoses from the race riots they've had out here? <laughs> Can I go to the... Oh, there's no racism in L.A. It's only in Boston and in the South. Just because every time the Lakers win a championship, they tip a police car over, 
that's an, that's an expression of joy that people... <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> liquid death, everybody. I love liquid death. Also known as alcoholism. Uh, <laughs> No leaving Las Vegas fans? You've heard me talk about their mountain water and flavored sparkling drinks. Oh, this is like the 1950s when they actually had the fucking ads right here. Wait a second. They had the products. Um, what are they? they have now three flavors of iced tea. Grim Leafer, Rest in Peach, and Armless Palmer. Oh, this is Rest in Peach right here. Come on. Oh, come on. That's their cute jokes. You can tell them to your kids. Huh? <laughs> These cans of iced teas are lightly sweetened. All right, they got it. They're a little light in the loafers. With six grams of premium agave, like the top shelf tequila, only 30 calories. Huh? Who here has an eating disorder? You can get behind that, right? <laughs> if you drink this and then make yourself puke, that is negative calories when you're starting off with only 30. All right? Ladies, are you going for the thigh gap? Huh? Do you want to not get your period anymore so you can get acting work? Come on. Let's try. <laughs> these, I like these new posts that people are making. This is me at 170. This is me at 200. This is me at 220. I love all three of these versions. It's like, well, you're becoming a fat fuck. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> I just want to be on the right side of history and let you know... <laughs> that you're gonna be telling a story at the heart and ball fucking, stroke ball fucking <laughs> extravaganza. Uh, these cans of iced teas are lightly sweetened with six grams of premium agave, only 30 calories and provide a microdose. There's the big word, I'm microdosing. I don't wanna deal with what I've, the mess of my life. Of 30 grams of caffeine per tall boy. The iced teas are also enhanced with B vitamins. Liquid death is not Capital letters, look at that, all caps, not loaded with sugar. <laughs> Try Liquid Death's new iced teas, water, f water or flavored sparkling water. They're available now with free shipping on Amazon <laughs> and retailers near you. Monday morning podcast listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase. You in mainland China, do not order this shit. That's how they find that you do the bootleg cable. That's what they did back in the day. It was a big sting operation. <laughs> Available at liquiddeath.com slash burr. Hey, do you remember that back in the day? That's, what, that's how they used to get people uh, back in the day. They used to have black box, right? If you didn't want to pay for ca cable, you'd buy the black box. You'd get all the fucking channels. And then when they wanted to bust people, no, that was criminals. <laughs> it wasn't just regular people stealing. Oh, if you had like warrants. What they did was they, they mailed out to all these people with warrants that they had won like a new fucking, you know, giant big box TV and you had to come down and claim it. And all these fucking idiots <laughs> went down there and they're sitting there going, all right, you won too. Wow, a lot of shady people seem to have won this thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I know you. Didn't we try to stab each other? What the fuck are you doing here? By the time they figured it out, they all, they all got arrested. And that was, that was the end of that. Anybody here microdosing? Huh? You are, right there? Hi, that's working for you? Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I guess, I guess it works. Am I really gonna shit on it? Microdosing? That's like coffee. I drink coffee. It's like, hey, drink coffee, it'll wake you up. It's like, it doesn't wake you up. It blocks the signals that tell you you need to go to sleep. That's what, you're still tired, right? <laughs> Sorry, are you guys all coffee drinkers? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> what do you mean, okay? <laughs> First agave, then microdosing, now coffee. What next, huh? Man buns? Is that what we're gonna go after? I didn't come here for this fucking bullshit. All right, we're gonna read some, some of the, uh, the things here. Oh, I'm sorry, somebody's chatting. What's, what's the matter, sir? Huh? Are you thinking about leaving? Is it too long? <laughs> All right, we're gonna go universal on this. All right, who here's excited to have me read some of the listeners' readings? Readings, huh? Oh, come on! You could do better than that! Yeah, there we go. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. I always love that. You can, do, you can do better than that. It's like, well, yeah, we could, but the first response was the honest one. I, I can always pretend 
Then I'm more excited. By the way, this is why I have back problems. This is, this is how I sit. I sit on my lower spine. This is from the beginning of my life. I don't want to fucking do that. I'm, why am I here? All right. Steve Jobs, everybody. Steve Jobs. You know where the new Steve Jobs is? Is that laminated, faced, hair-plugged cunt on Twitter. What do you mean, which one? The guy who fucking bought it. The Tesla guy. Ugh. My wife has a Tesla. Every time she's in the driveway and she's backing up, and I just hear, it sounds like there's a Great Dane outside that needs to get fed. Then I hear her pulling forward, and I'm like, okay, good, she got it in the spot. It's like, Jesus Christ, just take out the shrub already. Those skin cancer mobiles? Like, why does the fucking windshield, like, go past your goddamn head? Like, another buddy of mine has one. The whole top of the car is just fucking opened up. I think it's for um, population control. They're going to try to take us out with melanonin. All I know is I don't know why everybody thinks that guy's amazing. Let me tell you right now. Somebody who, who has, like, fucking, like, Botox face and a hair system... You're going to look at them like, yeah, man. <laughs> this guy has the answers. It's like, this guy's looking in a mirror. Like, I don't like the way I look. <laughs> I don't, ex I reject aging. I reject it. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> to me, he looks like space Christopher Walken. <laughs> Like, you know, when you go in a wax museum, they're like, this is Christopher Walken. You're like, sort of, but that's not him. That's what he... <laughs> you know, they, well, they took away the blue checks this week, and I can't even begin to tell you how much that affected my life. <laughs> is this Bill? I don't know if it is. Um, <laughs> it's like, dude, I'm not paying for your fucking Botox. All right? You can take that blue check and stick it right in your fucking hair system. Um, I'm too real for that, man. <laughs> I let myself go bald. I did because I had alopecia. I didn't have any soldiers to bring to the front. Uh, <laughs> if I did, I would have called in. I would be sitting up here looking like, you know, a lion tamer. Uh, Steve Jobs, everybody. The original. Didn't really do anything. Turtleneck cunt. Do you know when white guys are taking credit for shit that they didn't do is they wear turtlenecks and they do that, you know, they, that, that fucking photo. <laughs> like they're interesting. Dear Billy Technology Tits, um, do you remember those IMAX that came out around the year 2000? I don't. Uh, they were translucent. Oh yeah, I remember those, the gumball color ones. And were, were, some were different colors. The monitor had the computer, was one piece, and there was a handle on the back for easy lifting. Yeah, they, they were the original kettlebells. Uh, <laughs> a lot of nerds got strong one side of the body. Uh, the reason they did this is because Steve Jobs said, don't trust a computer, you can't throw out the window. What does that even mean? <laughs> but that doesn't work. Like if your computer was like doing something bad to your life, that's not your computer. There's something beyond your computer that has accessed your computer. So taking that thing and throwing it out the window doesn't end it, you know? That's like the end of The Exorcist, when the priest is going, you know, possess me, possess me, and the devil went into him, and then he jumped out the window and killed himself. He didn't kill the devil, he killed himself. Was the devil like, no, like, like all of a sudden he was flesh and blood? He wasn't. I like that somebody's boozing already. I love a day drinker. You know what I mean? There's something, there's something peaceful about that. You know, you fucked your whole life up. You've ac accepted it. You know how day drinkers drink? Oh, they sit there. They always sit there, right? And they got their skinny, alcoholic legs. 
you know, they got the leg crossed, and it's like right here, and there's all these explosions of veins going down it. They got that big fucking belly, and I've never lifted a weight in my life. They just sit there the whole time, right? And they got their little napkin with their drink on it, and they just sit there going like this. There's a serenity <laughs> to just knowing you lost it all. There's no way to rebuild. <laughs> You're not getting back. You're just sitting there waiting to die. <laughs> and then just meeting a higher power, you know? And before he even opens his big, fat, all-knowing mouth, <laughs> you just go, dude, I know, I know. <laughs> So what are you going to do? Are you going to be the last person to judge me? <laughs> Let me guess. You got something to say. <laughs> did I choose the devil? Is that what I did? Isn't the devil your creation, you fucking cunt? <laughs> the fuck are you mad at me for? Oh, Steve Jobs. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. Um... Do you remember uh, those iMacs that came out around the year 2000? Yeah, they were translucent. Blah, blah. Don't, don't trust a computer you can't throw out the window. Maybe that was like, that made sense back then. Like maybe 2000 technology. The feds were closing in and you're like, oh, fuck. And you threw <laughs> your gumball thing out the window. Then they're like, we lost the signal. God damn it. <laughs> Six months of work down the fucking tubes. I'm gonna start a legislation. No more handles on computers. <laughs> All right. The monitor and the computer was one piece and there was a handle on the back for easy lifting. Uh, don't trust the computer, you can't get it. Aren't you glad you never had a computer with a handle? <laughs> and does this redeem Steve no belt jobs in your eyes? No. <laughs> That's like he's in sex trafficking on Epstein Island and says, watch out for that 12-year-old. She has the clap. <laughs> oh, wow, my whole perception of you just fucking changed. <laughs> Thank you, you turtleneck cunt. <laughs> you know you can blame for Steve Jobs? Huh? You know you can blame for that? God. Yep, God made him too. God makes all of these fucking people, never gets any criticism. It's always the mountains and the prairies and the ocean so blue just makes one fucking psycho cunt after another that somehow ascends to the top, you know? There's all these decent people. Well, you know, I don't, I don't want to tell people what to do. I don't want to tell people how to live, right? And where do those people go, huh? They go to fast food, you know? To try to, you know, ease the pain in their soul. They stand in two hour and 40 minute lines at Universal. <laughs> to go on a three minute ride. <laughs> Never gonna get that time back. You know, someday I will be on my deathbed. <laughs> and I will think <laughs> of all those times. Like, I, 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 you know, I'm not a line person. You know, these fucking. These, 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 these coffee shops, these hot dog places, right? If I smoked crack, if there was a line, I would just be like, yeah, I'm getting soap. <laughs> I'm not standing behind all of these fucking itchy motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anger control method. Oh, geez, they're gonna help me out with my anger. Maybe I should, this really is like a sort of like a therapist couch. This is the leather, you know, that makes you feel comfortable enough to lay down with your back to somebody, a stranger, and just tell them about your whole life. And then when I was eight, my dad. <laughs> Do you know why you have your back to them? It's so they, you can't see them nodding off or playing a video game. 
every once in a while they just chime in, and how did you feel about that? Like, what did that, what did that make you feel? Oh, that's terrible. All right, anger control method. Dear Billy the red-faced rage burr. <laughs> I love how you guys fucking think that I just walk around with the level of anger that I ascend to when I'm in performance. <laughs> Sorry. I like to dress up my shit jokes every once in a while. I like to feel important. I just realized there's a camera over here looking at my balls. Sorry. Um, I like the podcast until the man's spreading. Remember that from the left? Literally told us how we could sit on a subway. You know, maybe if you aired out your clam every once in a while, you wouldn't be fucking worried about how guys are fucking sitting. I reserve the right to air, to air, fucking air out my freckled speed bag every whenever the fuck I want to. Yeah. Now these goddamn fucking liberals are saying you can't air out your American balls in your fucking truck because it hurts their fucking precious snowflake feelings. I love that term, snowflake. Everybody is a snowflake, right? You've never walked down the street and seen someone who looks exactly like you. We, we are. <laughs> you know? And like snow, initially, we're beautiful. <laughs> I love that you saw immediately where that was going. You just went, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually you just end up pushed to the side in some dirty snow covered in mud. <laughs> <laughs> That's called your 30s, and then it's all fucking... No, sorry, sorry, I know. I'm 32, but my trainer says my body is only 26. <laughs> Remember that one? That was right up there with, we're, you know, we, you can buy a star and we'll name it after you. Do you remember? That was one of the greatest fucking scams ever. That'll be $200. Where is it? Oh, there it is. That's right up there. Right up there. It's named Mikey Michelson. That's your star. Can you point to it one more time so when I tell my friends I can find it? To... <laughs> is this is the one that's going twinkle, twinkle? Or twinkle, twinkle, twinkle? No, no, it was the first one. It's the first one. All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> Some scams are just so funny. That, you know, if people just buy into it, you, you can't get mad at it. All right. Um, you've asked if anyone has a method for getting rid of your anger. Um, my new thing, too, is I just want to stop cursing in front of my kids. You know, my, my kid told her best friend that um, she said, Dad says the bad word. And her, her friend was like, really? And my daughter was like, yeah, he loves saying it. And then she told that to her mom, who then relayed the message back to me with my wife in a group text. <laughs> Fortunately, she's cool as shit and thought it was funny. But, you know, I still got the glance. from my wife. You know, we went out and got coffee this morning and I made her laugh her ass off. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Is there anything better than the lovely Nia's laugh? Come on, man. It's the best. It's the best. Well, we're going to do more of these live things and I, well, we're going to, at some point, you know, it's hard with the kids, but at some point we're going we're gonna to get her back in here. I know. People, I know. Most of you think she's funnier than me, you fucking assholes. Um, <laughs> You ask if anyone, somebody's having a heart attack right now on a golf course, and for some reason, I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> you asked if anyone has a method of getting rid of your anger. Um, I have a home brewed one that I made up myself. Oh, I love this. You tape an onion to your foot. Um, <laughs> anytime you get mad, it's, it's not really the onion, it's the process. Um, although it might have been invented er already. All right, so you're taking credit for it and like going, I don't know, maybe. All right, basically every time you start to get angry about bullshit, exhale all of your breath and hold it as long as you can. <laughs> I'm going to do this just to freak out my wife. Like when she's giving me shit for doing whatever I did wrong, I'm just looking at her and just be like... What are you 
you doing? Working on my anger. The fuck you think I'm doing? <laughs> Basically, every time you start to get angry about bullshit, exhale all of your breath and hold it as long as you can. Eventually, the lizard part of your brain will flood you with fear of not being able to breathe and it'll be more powerful than any other emotion. All right, listen, I have a fucking temper, but like this fucking guy, like the fact that he literally has to get it, you're gonna die, warning, warning. Beep, 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 beep. Nothing matters but your next breath. Okay. <laughs> In my mind, I basically said, okay, you fucking asshole. This is him talking to himself. This is how angry people talk to themselves. Because you hate yourself. Okay, you fucking asshole. If you want to freak out, you have to contend with me holding my breath. Ooh, wait a minute. I love that. I love that he talks about the angry person in his brain like it's a complete stranger. That's a whole, all right, you fucking asshole. There's also a lack of like, uh, um, um, what, do you, what do you call that? Um, responsibility. You know, it's not me, it's angry man in my head. Okay, you fucking asshole, if you want to freak out, you have to uh, contend with me holding my breath. It didn't fix me, but I do not freak the fuck out over... <laughs> okay, this doesn't work at all. However, once I run out of oxygen, start seeing black spots, I don't freak out over bullshit anymore. My heart rate doesn't spike and I am overall more calm. <laughs> this feels like alone in the car. Maybe you could do this, but then you're operating a vehicle. There's more to do, there's more to it, but I don't want to make a long email even longer. <laughs> I could explain the entire method, but once you've passed out, I don't want to fucking tell you what you should do after that. <laughs> also, buy a Fitbit. Watch, it helps to show you when your blood pressure is spiking. No, don't inhale and hold your breath. That makes you freak out more. <laughs> don't inhale or hold your breath. That's, we're back to breathing. <laughs> Sincerely, another crazy motherfucker. All right. Well, I can commend you, sir, for trying. You know what I, I found that's supposed to work is you inhale as much as you can, and then at that point, you inhale and last quick like that, and somehow, it, I don't know. I don't know what it does, but it, it, it he actually seems... He actually says at the end, don't do that, because it'll make you freak out more. Oh, inhale. He's saying don't do... Oh, that's what I was saying. All right, well, I don't think, like, emptying all of my breath... Yeah, like, I'm just... I'm is not... there a part two? Is there a no. sequel no. to this? No. You know, I'll hold off judging you, sir, until you tell me how the rest of this technique goes. All right? How about that? You've built a lot of suspense here, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel I have more questions than I had answers before I fucking read that thing. All right. The U.S. will never be good at soccer. Oh, my God! Fuck! Not that! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Guys, come on! We got to get it together. Yeah, we, we, we will never be... Listen. I'll tell you this the rest of the world, the day American black people give a shit about soccer, that is the end of all of you. <laughs> I have been watching ESPN since the late 80s, and I can tell you, the second American black people give a fuck slash are allowed to play, it's fucking over. <laughs> yeah. It is fucking over. Um, all right. Hey, Billy, you capitalist fuck. Uh, all right. You've been going off on a lot of tangents recently. What do you mean recently? My whole fucking life. <laughs> Regarding American superiority in sports. I never said that. When the fuck did I say that? I'll tell you what's fucking amazing. I posted this thing on fucking professional level badminton. It is absolutely fucking insane. It's one of the, the, the sickest sports I've ever seen. Ping pong is fucking amazing. I like all of that shit. Okay, and there's another thing too about like, uh, you know what's really gonna be a sad thing is you guys watch volleyball? 
women's volleyball. I know you're not allowed to in Hollywood because you're like, well, you know, not in a predatory way. I don't watch. I do. 100%. I just sit there, those fat asses and those thick thighs. And I just go, look at these gorgeous, these fucking Amazonian goddesses that didn't lean on their looks and actually get up every day and train. It's fucking amazing. It's hot chicks doing something. <laughs> like, when the fuck do you ever see that? <laughs> fucking amazing. But you know what's funny? Ugly chicks who don't look good in fucking booty shorts are now like, can we change the shorts to fucking get it get? No. <laughs> no. I got a fucking... Dad gut, do I tell people, can we get rid of the half shirt? No. I am too old and ugly to wear that shit, okay? Let beautiful people be beautiful. Right? Listen, we all know the one thing, the, 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 everything that a woman has ever accomplished is based on the fact that they're hot. <laughs> You know? Like, guys, why haven't you read more Edith Wharton, right? <laughs> Not just because it's a book, because she's plain. You don't want to fuck her. And the second you don't want to fuck her, you don't care what she has to say. Forget about what she wrote. Really? If a hot chick walked up to you with a fucking pop-up book and said, I read this, I wrote this, you would fucking read it right in front of her. <laughs> You're literally going to take away what makes guys give a fuck about the sport. I'm just being honest. If you take away those fucking booty shorts, women's volleyball, is gonna lose all of their funding <laughs> because we're the only ones watching it. <laughs> Women do not watch sports. <laughs> you watch other shit. You watch other shit and that shit makes money, all right? You leave the lingerie league alone. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. There's plenty of plain Janes that I don't want to fuck that have vaginas that have accomplished amazing things, but I don't remember their names because they're not hot. <laughs> and my male ego always says, I have a shot. <laughs> and your way in is knowing their name. <laughs> All right, another 19 minutes to do. <laughs> I am literally just saying dumb shit just to be saying it. Um, all right, the U.S. will never be good at soccer. All right. Are you going to take away our blue check next? Who gives a fuck? Hey, Billy, you capitalist fuck. Uh, you've been going off on a lot of tangents recently regarding American superiority in sports. Uh, you claim that the reason the U.S. isn't the best at sports like soccer or rugby is because we don't give a fuck. Yeah. Don't you watch the Olympics? <laughs> Haven't you seen American citizens that barely have rights in this country dominate? <laughs> <laughs> That's when we like people of color, when the Olympics come along. They were like, yay, USA, USA. Same guy won a gold medal. Oh my God, the neighborhood's going to hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need more of a mixed crowd for these jokes to land. Um, what you haven't discussed is why that is. Sports like soccer aren't popular in the US because there's no money in it. Oh, are you gonna explain my country to me? Oh, thank you, arrogant person. Could the, what are you gonna, let me guess, you're gonna come to the US and go to New York City? Is that what you're gonna do? Go to the top of the Empire State Building? Go to the fucking Statue of Liberty? Could she look less welcoming, by the way? I always love that. Give us your poor, give us your whatever. I mean, you see the look on her face. We don't want them. Um, could the U.S. dominate in sports uh, that the rest of the world gives a shit about? Maybe. 
Why is there no money in it? Because you can't broadcast it without generating the same amount of advertising revenue as sports like baseball. I love that he asked the question for me. Why is there no money in it? Oh, do tell, person from another country. Because you can't broadcast it without generating the same amount of advertising revenue as sports like baseball or football that allow you to watch two minutes of a game before fucking you with Wendy's Baconator. Baconator, sorry, commercials. Where have you been for fucking 15 years of this podcast? And a dick pill advertising. Town. Anyways, thanks for all the laughs, you pasty, bald-headed fuck. Um, he spelled bald, B-A-L-L-E-D. Is, is that a sports thing, or is he as dumb as me? Um, yeah, well, then didn't you kind of agree with me? Listen, you know what? Soccer to me is like Star Wars. I don't really hate it. I just know that people love it. So I make fun of it so I can just watch them flip out. I, I don't give a shit about it. It's a great sport. I like that there's no commercials. I love all the drunks singing the songs, keeping their throats warm with the scarves. You know, they got singing to do. You know, they have to make sure their instrument... <laughs> Smoke a couple of fags and have a point. Um... Over here, that means you, you know. Uh, red flags, <laughs> you blew a couple of guys. Uh, red flags, hey, Bill Burt. Um, a couple weeks ago, I kicked my ex out as I learned. Okay, a couple weeks ago, you kicked your ex out. All right, so that sounds like you broke up when you were still living together. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, as I learned to take care of the cat she left behind. Uh, <laughs> you're taking care of the cat? Dude. Unless you're in a wheelchair, there's no reason you haven't punted that thing out your fucking window. It's a cat. It's going to kill birds. You can't, you can't abandon a dog, you know? They're too slow. They have regular feet, you know? They don't have those Freddy Krueger gloves on each feet like a cat has. A cat can survive. There's no reason, people. There's no reason to bring cats inside. Just... And don't spade or neuter them. Let them fuck as much as they want to. You know. Oh, by the way, Universal Studio, a Universal fucking theme park, the level of school shooter vibe when, when you go into some of those mystery worlds, the amount of fucking non-pussy, long-coated people in the summer. I mean, just, it's just like, can somebody do a background check? on this fucking guy. It's just, it's unbelievable. <laughs> that was one of 70 things I said in line to my wife, in line to my wife that she just rolled her eyes and was like, I'm not acknowledging that. Um, anyways, as I, okay, uh, as I learned to take care, I've really now realized how many times I restart these things. I'm sorry for that. Let me try to get better at this and start it and Get to the end. All right. As I learned to take care of the cat she left behind, I have been bringing a number of your pods to hear from people who've dealt with similar situations and throughout that. Does that mean he listened to other episodes? Uh, binging. He's binging. There's no R there. Oh, binging. <laughs> I said I've been bringing a number of your pods. I've been binging a number of your pods to hear what people who've dealt with similar situations and throughout that. What, do you just listen to a podcast? Like, gee, I hope people bring up cats you don't want. <laughs> Maybe this is the episode where my dream comes true. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't help but laugh at all the times I should have cut my relationship of two years off sooner. Yeah, 100%. Well, good for you. You got out of it. You got out of it, and if the end of it is all you are is stuck with this cat that doesn't give a fuck about you and shits in a box, you got off easy. <laughs> you could be making payments to that whore, right? <laughs> all the ladies independent. <laughs> the amount of liars at a Beyonce concert. <laughs> Throw your hands up at me. Come on now, sweetheart. Who bought the tickets? Who bought the tickets? Uh, 
I'm going to list off what I refer to as five red flags that slate this person in my mind as some sort of GTA character. Grand Theft Auto. All right. Number one. Uh, I, like the, I like a list. <laughs> Wait, number five. I only go, oh, there's five over there. Okay. Looking in her phone to discover that I've been cheating on... Okay, wait. Looking on her phone to discover that I've been cheated on at least twice despite confronting her about this more than once. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> I love how that's not the end of the relationship. <laughs> like all that got was a why I oughta... <laughs> If one more dick goes in your mouth that isn't mine, oh, ooh, am I gonna get steamed? <laughs> GTA character, video game player, long coat, guaranteed you, never got pussy, hanging in there. <laughs> Worry that if you need, you need to know that another one's out there. Another one's out there. There are so many weak broads out there. <laughs> Just waiting for someone like, no, I'm kidding. Uh, living with me rent-free for nine months and complaining about not being able to find work while frequently going to raves and hanging out with older men that put on Nazi-themed raves. That's another red flag, everybody. Gee, I don't know. Things are starting to get weird. <laughs> Who's this text from and why are they calling you Ava? Uh, <laughs> nothing, I just did a little role playing. It was totally innocent. <laughs> all right, I sucked a Nazi cock. All right, that's what I did, okay, I'm sorry. It was on Hitler's fucking birthday. I got caught up in the moment. Somebody said Kanye. Kanye doesn't even remember saying that shit. He needs help, okay? <laughs> I love how people, oh, you know, crazy people. Just because you're crazy doesn't mean you say any Semitic shit. It's like, well, you've obviously never been in a bus station. <laughs> Maybe you need to walk away from your infinity pool and your fucking uber blacks and fucking get into the real world of mental illness. I knew that wasn't going to go well. All right, number three. Uh, using drugs in my house, even though I told her I don't want to be associated with that. Jesus Christ with the heroin again. What? It's Tuesday. I told you on Tuesday I do heroin. Sunday's the Nazi parties, and maybe I'll suck a cock on Thursday. All right? I made a schedule. It's up on the wall. You can read it. I'm really getting tired of these outbursts. Just for the record, I have had enough of the outbursts. There's still two more. All right, wait, 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 we're, we've got past hump day. Number four. The battery record that I ignored to the point of being slapped more times than I can count. I'm, I'm rapidly losing... Sympathy and respect for you here. She's sucking other dicks. She's going to Nazi rallies. Is she wearing her Nazi garbs? That's that old Nazi. Und I ask the questions. <laughs> hey, did you fuck somebody else in my car? Shut them out. <laughs> Und I will fuck who I want. In your car and not clean up. Fuck. Your cloth interior. <laughs> you can drive in the wet spot of the seat. What? It wasn't that. I, I tried to, you know, hit the button to get the water on the windshield. And for some reason, well, you know, lubricant came out of my pussy. I, I just don't know why you feel that I'm out here doing something wrong. You know what it is? You're paranoid. That's what it is. You're paranoid. What? I'm into history. I'm into history. Okay? <laughs> World War II fascinates me. Some people into Star Wars. You know, I'm into Rudolph Hess. Uh, <laughs> All right. 
sorry, the battery that I ignored to the point of uh, being slapped more times than I can count, leading up to a black eye. That's not a slap, dude. That's closed fist and a bloody cut. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, I gotta be honest with you. Uh, at that point, <laughs> you got a black eye and a bloody lip. You know, you can at least leg swoop her fucking <laughs> Nazi boots out from underneath her, can't you? <laughs> I mean, at what point do you do a front kick to the puss? <laughs> <laughs> to at least create some space so you can stop <laughs> getting rained down on. All right, number five. <laughs> this, for some reason, everybody, this still wasn't enough to get out of this relationship. This guy's still hanging in there. It's crazy. Is this guy like half golden retriever? <laughs> uh, loyal to a fault. <laughs> number five, back in Savannah where she grew up one of her ex's entire friends and family group hated this woman because they think she killed this guy and got away with it. Uh, come on. Come on. I'm, I'm saying bullshit. All right, there's so much more bullshit. This is like a Netflix series. Which, by the way, I mean, you know, if there was any sort of support for gingers, that fucking, those, that whole family of evil gingers in South Carolina... You know, we already have kick a ginger day. Did that story really need to be told? It had a happy ending. They caught the guy, right? Anyway, there's so much more bullshit. Um, bullshit. I mean, there's a death here. There's a murder. There's so much more bullshit that I am going to save for my therapist, but I figured you'd lose your ginger-infested mind reading this. Uh, imagine, and I hear you're lashing out at me. Dude, I'm not the one who fucking slapped you. And fucking bang somebody else behind your back in your fucking car, right? We're wearing a Nazi fucking... What? I like Hogan's Heroes, okay? <laughs> I just, you know, I came back from Comic-Con. I didn't have a chance. <laughs> Robert Crane's adopted daughter was there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a 60-year-old reference. All right, sorry, all right. Uh, I see this email has the bootleg version of me going to China to write confessions. Of, I don't want to read the rest of this, but listen, dude. Um... Wow, who would have thought that you adopting a fucking cat was the worst part of it? Um, was not, I'm sorry, it was not going to be the worst part. Uh. Can I be honest with you? That's why, like, you know, when they started doing that thing where they would have, like, trans people going to school, if that's the right word, and all of that shit. Like, that's why I was against that shit. It's like, wait a minute, wait, you haven't even figured out how to do the right version heterosexually of this. You know what I mean? Like the sex talk and all of that. <laughs> like all they did was just tell you what happened. And the sperm goes uh, up the uh, vaginal canal and uh, there's billions of them and if one of them penetrates, then, then the woman is pregnant. There should have been a guy like going, your fucking life will be over. <laughs> Do you know why pussy feels so good? <laughs> because if it only felt okay, we would just jerk off because it wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> Finding a woman can be the greatest thing of your fucking life or end it. <laughs> That's what they should have been screaming at people. <laughs> Forget about all of this fucking gender shit. Just how it, just human being to human being. It should be for fucking everybody. Right? He, she's, and they's. All sit down. <laughs> and the first thing they learn, they, te they teach you how to do. They teach everybody how to fight. <laughs> right? Or at least the women, right? They teach you how to jujitsu, right? So then you don't have to be in an abusive relationship because you can fuck the person up too. Then the next thing they do is they teach you how to break up with somebody. This is before they even talk about fucking or any of that shit. They should sit down and be like, this, okay, this is, this is what, like, you know, they should fucking read this. They should read this fucking red flags thing. The fact that this guy's calling these red flags, this was fucking abuse. 
Then I woke up and she took a sword and cut off my pinky toe. And was like, what, you have nine others? Eh? And she walked out of the fucking room. I don't think schools should be doing anything other than just fucking what they're good at. One plus one is two, two plus two is four, right? And let parents handle the rest of the shit, no? Yeah. Why are you getting involved in that shit? Even the health classes, don't fuck, I'll fucking tell them. Dude, when I have this sex talk with my kids, whatever they turn out to be, right? So much of it is gonna be how to get out of a fucking relationship. <laughs> All right, I'll help you guys out because there's some of you probably in this boat right now. <laughs> and if you are in this boat right now, you can tell because your, your, your face is getting a little hot. This is what you have to tell yourself. You have to tell yourself, I'm breaking up with this person. It's going down. You just make a list, okay? I'm doing my laundry, I'm fucking getting a sandwich, and then I'm breaking up with this person, <laughs> all right? And there's gonna be a fucking check mark next to all of this shit. It's gonna be ugly, no one's gonna enjoy it, but I am fucking doing it, and it's gonna be, all you have to say is we need to talk, all right? Why? What's wrong? And then you just say, I'm not happy. <laughs> and then you're in. <laughs> and you're going down the slide. And once you start, you don't stop. You don't fucking stick a mitt in her face or his face. You fucking... You finish the fight. <laughs> you just say, I am not happy. What do you mean not happy? I'm, just, I'm not happy. This just isn't working for me. I love you, but not enough to marry you. I want something more than this, and this isn't it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you don't have to say anything else. You just let them flip out and do their little fucking thing and yada, 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 but you don't break from that. This is over. Once you fucking say it's over, <laughs> you don't let pull you back in for another fucking eight months of hell, right? This is what they should be telling kids in like sixth grade. <laughs> you got a little boyfriend, little girlfriend, whatever you're into. When he or she walks up to your locker, are you thinking like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> it's over. Sorry. I don't have a punchline at the end of this. <laughs> I think we need to do all of that. Just teach people how to do that. And then you can have some fucking, you know, whatever the fuck you want to have them walking in telling you it. Right? Trucker. Whatever, whatever, the, fuck, whatever the fuck you're into. <laughs> there was a positive message somewhere in there. You guys just got so quiet, I got freaked out. <laughs> I was like, oh. all right. Pick up line advice from a lay... Oh, then I should say another thing. But if you get somebody that you love, right, that you're into, just be fucking nice to them. Remind yourself, because you will. You're fucking... It's like that thing you had to have, you know? Look at that fucking shirt. I got to get that fucking shirt, right? Then you wear it a couple times, it goes through the wash, and then it's just sort of fucking laying over there. <laughs> You treat it like shit or whatever, yeah. <laughs> no, it's unreal. Even if you love somebody, you're gonna have to remind yourself that I should be nice to them, right? You know who really needs to do that? Women. <laughs> yeah. How not nice you guys are is why guys are so funny. It's the humor, it's the col guys are funny because of the collective hopelessness of our situation. <laughs> and that's what we do. We just, we don't even, like, I don't even have to know you or you or you. We just, in certain situations, we can just look at each other and just go. <laughs> and that's it. 
And even if my relationship is going good, I'm going to fucking laugh my ass off. My wife's like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, nothing, nothing. I'll tell you later. And my laugh is what's going to help that person in its knowing. Same thing with stand-up. It's when I say this crazy shit, you guys laugh. It makes me feel better that I'm not the only guy that fucking thought or, or whatever. Like, that's what it is. But you guys, you know, you really guys, you fucking really need to go back to making a meal every once in a while. You know, if we're still holding fucking doors and all of that shit, you know, it would be nice. And we shouldn't have to ask for it. You should do it because that's what you do for somebody you love, you stuck up cunts. See? That's what they need to be teaching in school. And I don't give a shit what's under that dress. Dick or a clam, as long as that's the message, I support it. Wait a minute. It's 10 or 2? I already went over? Yeah, but we got two more if you want to. All right, you know something? That's how much fun you guys were and all you guys hanging out. All right, hey, we're going to smoke a cigar after this? We got to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, hey, everybody, my buddy's up there. We got we to gotta do something. All right, pick up line advice from a lady. By the way, not enough women write in. I don't know why. I'm calling you. <laughs> Gee, I don't know, Bill. Misogyny? <laughs> you know what's funny about being misogynistic? <laughs> Just rains, pussy. Just rains. <laughs> Women like a challenge. <laughs> oh my God, you're so pretty. I, I respect you. That's really amazing what you're doing with your life. Drying up pussy. <laughs> How come you didn't call me yesterday? I was, I was busy. <laughs> oh God. Too busy to fuck me? <laughs> Blowing up your phone. It works, guys. It works. <laughs> Old guys told me that. I didn't believe it. I was nice to them. They cheated on me. Started being a dick. Now look. <laughs> now look, yeah. Married a goddess. Yeah, she has, she has the nerve to get upset with me that I'm a dick. It's like, this is what she liked. This is what she liked. You know what's cool? I went to an event last night. There's a bunch of pretty women there, right? And I was sitting across, and I saw my wife in all of them. And she was still the one I wanted to bang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some woman just went, aww. <laughs> yeah. I told her that this morning. <laughs> we had a great breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> like that? There's some tips for you. All right, love when the ladies write in. Pick up advice from a lady. Hey, Billy Bumpkins, a couple episodes back, one of your readers had a question about pickup lines, and you asked for advice. From a female perspective, all right, here we go. Uh, I would want to get the hell away from a random guy in a train if he all of a sudden nervously chatting me up. Well, yeah, you'd, anywhere. <laughs> nervously, like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> you don't want any stranger to come up to you, start talking to you nervously. It's, if a guy came up to me chatting to me nervously, I think he was going to stab me. <laughs> um, and I was alone, uh, sorry, nervously chatting me up, and I was alone with nowhere to escape, and there was a crazy guy nearby. Um, let's see. But I'm also kind of a nervous person to begin with. I'm also 40 and have been in the same relationship since 2005, so I know nothing of dating and pickup lines these days. Uh, my worst pickup line experience was back in college. I was trying to hit on a random cute guy in a bar. Look at her, taking control of this situation. Ladies, get a little European and Canadian every once in a while. All right? Bring your game to the game. Don't wait for it to come to you, right? Um, I had been playing on the ultimate Frisbee team and recently had a stress fracture in my foot that, foot that required crutches for a couple of weeks. I was very keen to commiserate with this guy about how miserable it is to be on crutches and how awful those sores are in your armpits. Yeah. Well, that's a great opening line. That's what you want to do when you're trying to bang somebody. Bring up sores on your body. And how impossible it is to open a door. I mean, this is the last one I'm going to read, Andrew. I don't want to overstay here. 
Um, and how would it, uh, it is impossible to open up, to open a door or walk and carry something at the same time. I can go up to this guy and open up with a pickup line. Wait, I go up to this guy and open, this is her pickup line. She opens with, crutches suck. <laughs> <laughs> He says, yeah, without looking up from his beer. <laughs> this sounds like a Coen Brother movie, doesn't it? <laughs> I start telling him about my miserable two-week crutch experience, and at some point say something along the lines, uh, wait, and it, so I know how you feel. To which he angrily yells, you do not know how I feel. What did I miss? Is this guy also on crutches? <laughs> Anyway, she goes, he yells, you do not know how I feel. And she writes, I sense his anger <laughs> and try to change the subject and ask questions about him. I'm about six beers deep and just rambling, but at some point I check out this guy more thoroughly and realize he only has one leg. <laughs> oh, no. That's why she left out that detail. Oh my God, that was brilliantly written. <laughs> Crutches are not just a two-week inconvenience for him, and I absolutely do not know how he feels. <laughs> I'm now picturing him back at his place and realizing how convenient it is when you have to blow somebody if they only have one leg. <laughs> There's all this extra space. You don't have to like lean over. Just come on in, you know? It's like suicide doors getting into a back seat. There you go, there it is right there. He just moves the stump. Anyways, I'm so embarrassed and disgusted with myself. I tried to apologize and buy him a beer, but he refused, got up and left. Uh, on a more positive note, the one pickup line that did work for me also was back in college and shortly after the crutches in incident. I came up to a guy in a staircase of, of a jello wrestling party. <laughs> a guy came up to me in a staircase of a jello wrestling party and asked me, hey, aren't you in my physics class? And I say, I don't know. Turns out we were in physics class together, but I had not noticed him before. So we started sitting together in class and I realized He's a nice, friendly guy, pretty smart, in pretty good shape, and likes to party. I was waiting for her to go, and he has both his legs. <laughs> <laughs> he invited me out to a party the following weekend, which soon became one of my most embarrassing date experiences. Jesus fucking Christ. I show up with some of my lady friends, and at some point, one of my lady friends disappears with one of his guy friends. We eventually figured out that they were hooking up in the back seat of a car out in the driveway. I decided to be a funny girl and smush my face up to the window to give them a little scare. <laughs> All right. I don't know how I feel about this person. I, I start to like them, then I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm back into this. This is nuts. Except I had a few too many beers and I hit the glass a little too hard. And my front teeth smash <laughs> to the window. <laughs> All right, I absolutely love this person now. I love this person. I chipped off my front tooth. We all had a good laugh. <laughs> Looking like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Uh, we had a good laugh as he helped me look for my tooth in the dirt. I was pretty mortified. Turns out he's into boozy girls who will risk a pencil, pencil tucky yuck mouth? What? Pencil tucky yuck mouth. Is that half Pennsylvania, half Kentucky? Yeah. Is that a meth reference? <laughs> of a smile just for a laugh. I have since gotten my tooth fixed and we've been laying off the booze. Great. And my jello wrestling physics partner is now my husband. And we are coming to see you June 24th in Newark, New Jersey. Can't wait. All right. Well, you know what? I think that's a real positive way to end this podcast. I had a fucking great time. I hope you guys did too. Yes. One more time for the troubadour. And Andrew Thamelis. And Andrew
Andrew Thevelis and Mike Bernalina. And that's it. Thank you so much. Good night. Good afternoon.